Do you, my darling? Oh, ta. Good night last night, wasn't it? Not bad. Not bad. You had a ball like I promised you would. You're not the first fella that's taken me out, you know. No, but I'll be the last, because now you won't want to look at anybody else. <laughs> Don't you love yourself? Yeah, you've not given me my good morning. Oh, I'm you? sorry. Come on, open it. Only you promised me something. What? No messing about. Well, not in working hours anyway. I promise. Well, say it. No messing about in working hours. Enjoying yourself, Terence. Any second now, mate. Morning. Oh, morning. You just have to work? Yeah, you? Yeah. I'll give you a lift if you like. Oh, no, it's all right. Yeah, come on, it's on my way. Well, more or less. Oh, thank you very much. There was a very good documentary on television last night. Did you see it? Oh, no, I missed it. No. There you are, greedy oh, guts. Great. Get stuck into that. Where's the fried bread? Oh, I'm making it. Let him make it himself, Deirdre. <laughs> what? And me, a fighting man, home on leave, going back to face... God knows what incredible dangers. The biggest danger you'll be facing is from that little blonde wren who keeps offering to wash your white front. Oh, we've not heard about her. Oh, the Admiralty is you little blonde wrens, didn't you know? He wishes they were. <laughs> I'll bet. Right, I'm off then. Somebody has to keep the wheels of commerce turning. Oh, which reminds me, Peter. Would you like me to rain send you a copy of the recorder every week? No. Thank you. Right, well, I'll see you at lunchtime for a farewell drink then. Mm. Right. Oh, uh, Mike was hoping that you were going to call around for drinks at lunchtime. Uh, that's no problem. We can fit you all in. Especially if the booze is free. Of course we can. All right, see you later then. Bye. Whew, that was a close one. Thank you, Peter. Hey, I'll lend me money on one thing. He's not letting I give him a lift to work in a new car. Peter. <laughs> Have you heard about this latest masterstroke of Dad's? He's pleading poverty after what he spent on the party. I wanted to put off the wedding till he's got a few quid again. Ah, uh, yes, he did mention it last night. Yeah, well, one thing you can say for me, Dad. Once he's convinced he's right... He's like a dog with a bone. I know. There you go, darling. There should be enough for two bacon butties and three cakes. If not, you can put the rest to yourself. Oh, you're dead generous. I know. Now, off you go, and don't go talking to anybody wearing aftershave. Didn't you know I've got a poor sense of smell? Stop it! Are we? <laughs> it's like you was a magnet of me and I am filing, darling. She's a nice little darling, our cell, isn't she? Yeah, but she's not your little darling. She's not wearing a ring or anything, Curly. She's Kev's girlfriend. Girlfriend, exactly. Which means that she's not exclusive to Webster. Well, he thinks she's exclusive to him. Ah, oh, cheese, old bean. And another thing, Terry, the way you keep mauling her, that's, that's sexual harassment, is that? I don't understand these big words, Curly. You know that. Funny sort of place to spend your life, Betty, isn't it? Clapped out old pub. Oh, could be worse. Oh, uh, like a salt mine in Siberia. Oh, come on, spring's in the air. Should be feeling cheerful. Oh, it's never but a cheat is spring. Mother Nature waking up and all that. Not much changes for us humans, does it? We don't go around sprouting buds, do we? Collecting twigs for a new nest. Nearest I get to feeling fruit is if I sucked a full packet of wine gum. <laughs> Still, there are exceptions, aren't there, Glow? Watch that. She got a lift to work this morning, Betty. Oh, yeah? From a handsome, unattached businessman who went out of his way especially. Oh. Who was it? Alan Bradley, otherwise known as Rocky Five. Can you put another record on, Brett? Oh, that's what you're hoping to do, isn't it? Go on, admit it. Coax him across the hall, put another record on and bingo! What an imagination, eh, Betty? Well, that's all she has got going for her, love. Imagination. Now, Betty. I can say that. You can't. <laughs> Is that you, Mike? Uh-huh. Hello. Do you think we have burglars? As long as they're all as beautiful as you, I wouldn't mind. You give over. Our kid and Jessica are coming about half twelve. No, he's letting them come, is he? I thought he would have banned the whole family from my drum. Don't be bitter, Mike. It's negative and it's corrosive. Oh, please, God, don't let me corrode. Think positive, and positive things will happen to you. What, like getting married? Yeah. When? As soon as my dad's solvent again. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, he's just a bit short of ready cash at the moment. You know, after the party, but... Well, as soon as he's got his pennies together, it shouldn't be very long. That recorder office is a little gold mine, you know. If only you'd admit to it. Look, why don't I pick up the tab for the wedding? Well, cos he wants to. Well, I want to. 
Well, he feels it's his duty as a father. He's a bit sort of Latin in that respect. Oh, please let him, for the sake of peace and quiet. All right, as long as it doesn't take him too long to refill his little piggy bank. No, it won't. Why don't you go and sort the drinks out, eh? Hmm. Well, I were on pins up and I won't bump into Kevin. Who do I like best? Kevin, I suppose, is nice. Terry, you know, more of a challenge. Well, you need a bit of excitement, don't you? Are you good balmy? Especially sitting in this dump all day. Oh, they're here. I'll have to go. Yeah, I'll see you in half an hour. Ciao. Nice time, darling. Where are you taking me? Well, I said I'd meet my friend. Are you trying to break my heart? <laughs> I can't break granite. You desert me for Webby tonight, and now you're leaving me to cry my beer this lunchtime. Well, Curly, you'll look after you, won't you, Curly? I was thinking of driving down to the park way in. It's very nice down there. Might even be warm enough to sit outside. Well, I said I'd see my friend. Old maid's steak and kidney pie, daffodils waving in the breeze. Well, I suppose my friend won't mind if it didn't turn out, would she? That's how you tell a good friend, if they don't mind. Yeah. Let's go, then. <laughs> Curly, walk up, will you? See you, Curly. Oh, mate. Hiya. What are you doing for dinner? I've just got the Rovers for a snack. It's one of Mrs. Bishop's working days. Oh. Do you know where Sally's gone? Uh, yeah, I think she said she was seeing a friend. Uh, yeah, she did. Oh. I'll uh, see you in there in a bit, then. Yeah, OK. Oh. Hello. Didn't expect to see you here. Well, I'm checking up on you, seeing if you've got another woman. I wouldn't do that. I was only joking. Yeah, I know. Can I get you a drink, Mrs. Bishop? No, I'm quite all right, thank you. Me too. Excuse me while I get myself in. He's dead old-fashioned, isn't he? No bad thing. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Cracked it at last, have you, Curly? Pardon? She looked very bereft when I told her I couldn't guarantee you came in at dinner time. Well, that's typical of you, if I might say so. What is? Your flippant attitude to a, to a relationship. Oh! In a relationship, then are you, love? Congratulations. There you go again. It's this casual attitude to a relationship between the sexes that causes all the problems. The unhappiness, the unwanted babies, the drug taking, the broken marriages. Let's try and be serious about sex for a change, shall we, and see what happens. I only asked if you were flipping mates with her. Do you usually have that effect on people? I gave her a piece of my mind. Oh, only a little piece, I hope. You can't afford to be too generous. <laughs> Sorry. What did Bet do to upset you? Oh, it wasn't Bet, Mrs. Bishop. It's Terry. Well, what's he been up to? Oh, he's not been chasing Sally around the office again, has he? Only all morning. Chasing around it? Oh, I see. Oh, isn't she Kevin's friend? Yes. Oh, dear. Exactly. I don't understand why you don't just tell Kevin what's happening. I mean, I'd tell a girlfriend if a boy was two-timing her. Because they're mates, aren't they, Terry and Kevin? Anyway, blokes don't go telling tales. Oh, come on. It's got nothing to do with being male or female. It's whether it's right or wrong. Oh, what shall I do, Mrs Bishop? I mean, should I tell Kevin? Should I split on Terry? Well, what would your reason be? Well, I don't like seeing Kevin being made a fool of, for one thing. You might not care, particularly. Oh, come on, Mrs Bishop. You know Kevin better than that. Well, what about right and wrong, as Tina says? Well, it's wrong for Terry to chase Sally around the office, and it's wrong of Sally to let him, which she does. I don't think you've much choice, then, have you, Norman? No, but I'd still be a grass. Oh. Where's your manners? Wait till you're asked. Has he always been a gannet? Uh, she means gourmet. I mean gannet. <laughs> is he uh, grab good in the Navy, is it? Ah, uh, it's not bad. I always fancied joining the Royal Air Force. You know, fighter pilot, uh, top button undone, white silk scarf, wizard prank and all that. Why didn't you? Can't stand flying. <laughs> right, cheers, here's to you, and see you soon. Cheers. Bottom cheers. up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not due for any more leave, unfortunately. Oh, no, but you'll get some for the wedding, surely. I mean, you'll be an usher at least. Ask the Admiral. I'll be able to manage that, but, you know, that's not likely to be for some time yet, though, is it? What gives you that idea? Peter. Now, come on, I want to know. <clears throat> what? I thought Dad's still hoping that it's not going to happen at all. Is, is he? Well, I was under the impression it definitely was going to happen. Isn't that right, love? I told you. 
He's a bit short of cash at the moment, that's all. Hmm. So you did. Nice one, Peter. All right, mate. Sorry I can't get any of me sooner. Only Mrs. O's been feeding me full of burst again. You wouldn't think he was the same lad, would you? What left you to come to me just a few short months ago? No, Mrs. Ogden. Now's your chance. I can't see out while Mrs. Ogden's there, can I? Can I have a bottle of light ale and uh, what's a bit of please? Yeah. Hey, uh, your mate there's not gone and gone all religious, have he? Girl. He gave me a right sermon just now about all the wickedness there is in the world. He seemed to blame it on sex. Sorry, Hilda. Well, it is in the dictionary, unfortunately. Yeah, well, he does tend to have a lot of principles, especially when he thinks he's in love. I well, know more than you, I think. No. Oh, no. Actually, this is the one he should have been preaching to. Oh, yeah. Her love life is that torrid at the moment. It's only don't catch fire. Don't believe a word she says, Hilda. I don't think that was very funny, Bet. It's only a joke, love. Yeah, well, you know what Hilda's like, don't you? It'll be the cast iron truth when she's repeated it a few times. I just wish you wouldn't discuss my private life with anybody. <laughs> Kenneth, what do you put all the wickedness there is in the world down to? Human frailty. And you, I get a posh answer. What's your poison? <laughs> uh, two gin and tonics, a bitter, and an orange juice for the driver, please. Oh, where are you driving to? No, no, it's not me. It's Peter. They're going back today. Oh, I've never even seen him in his bell bottoms. <laughs> It uh, must be nice having all your family at home. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. For as long as it lasts. Kevin's as good as on his own now. I'm not sure. Well, we're sure, aren't we, Mrs Bishop? Do you think it'll cause any trouble? Yeah. Well, it's bound to. Oh, that's always the snag with taking Go action. Go on! Or I'll tell him. Mm. You got a minute? Yeah. I think so. Not back at work till I have one. Uh, Kev? Yeah. Listen. I lied to you before when I said Sally's gone for dinner with her mate. She's gone with Terry. And what's more, he, he took her out last night. I just thought you should know. I'm sure he took her out? Definite. Thanks, mate. Where's Kevin gone? Oh, uh, he's had some business to sort out, Mrs. O. Oh. Oh. Oh, Did you tell yes, him? I told him. Well, I'm sorry you're going, but uh, bon voyage. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope next time you come up, well, hopefully the atmosphere will be a little less strange. Oh, we've enjoyed ourselves, haven't we, Peter? Yeah, of course you have. It's only, um. What? Well, don't try me too clever, eh, Dan? You know, about my concern. It'll only make things worse. I don't have to be clever. The whole business will just disappear rather sheepishly into the sands of time. You just see if I'm not right. Another unforgettable experience, thanks to Teddy. Well, I didn't see any daffodils waving in the breeze, if that's what you mean. That's because you couldn't take your eyes off me, darling. Oh, you're incredible, you. Terry! <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, what brings you here? You're having a nice sound together, have you? Well, I just went for a bit of a bar yeah. sound. So... And what about last night? You <laughs> Thank you very much for having oh, me. Oh, it's a pleasure, love. <laughs> Mr. Barlow? Bye. Oh, Sue. Bye-bye. Oh, there was just one thing I wanted to ask you, Dad. Wouldn't like to buy us out the knife, would you? Well, like you said to me when I offered to send you the recorder, no. <laughs> Worth a try, eh? Uh, nice thing, anyway. <laughs> See you. Cheerio, Deidre. Bye-bye, Peter. Hey, you make sure you get enough to eat now. <laughs> Cheerio, kid. Hey, don't let Dad grind you down, eh? Don't worry, I won't. Bye-bye, Jessica. Bye. Yeah, Jessica. Have a good journey. Keep taking the seasick pills. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Ah, oh, they make a nice couple, don't you think? Nice girl, Jessica. Yes, Dad. You never guess where Ralph is, Betty. The annual inspection of the sewage works, would you believe? Should give him an appetite. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Well, so long as he doesn't bring it home with him, I don't care. Oh, damn. Oh, do you know? <coughs> Pardon me, I'm so stiff. I've been standing in for him in the shop today, so I said to myself, treat yourself to a little pick-me-up. 
It'll do you good before you put the microwave on. Oh, microwave and all that. That is one thing that higher purchase taught me, Betsy, Ooh. to keep up with modern technology. Mind you, now I can afford to pay for it in cash. Oh, dear. Oh. Maybe. Well, this is a bonus I didn't expect. My husband has deserted me for a sewage farm. What do you say to that? Well, I think you'll find it's only a passing infatuation. Oh! <laughs> find a bit of please. What would okay. you like? Thank you very much. I'll have another gin and tonic, please. That's another advantage of the microwave, Betty. You can stop out till all hours. I didn't know you needed an excuse, oh. love. Oh. <laughs> this is where you've been hiding, is it? I'm not hiding. Where have you been all afternoon? I've been doing that job for that woman on Cobden Street. Thanks, sir. Okay, pal. What for? For splitting on me and Sally to Webby. Oh, yes, I did, Terry. You left me no alternative. You were making a fool of him, you and Sally. God might have thumped you, mate. Well, that's your answer to everything, isn't it? Violence. Webby's flaming answer, isn't it? Look at that. Come in the office, give me right battering. Kevin battered you. Yeah, yeah. Steamed in, didn't he? Caught me by surprise. He come at me like a rabid dog. But he'll regret it. No danger. And there's still you yet, mate. You grass. I'd do it again, Terry. Look, you won't, you know. Don't think I'll forget, because I won't. Oh, uh, have you seen Kevin, Terry? On his stopping over his tea, yes. No, I haven't, Mrs. O. And I hope for his sake I don't. For well, but your dad. My dad? What about? I want to put a proposition to him. Proposition? Ah, it's about the wedding. Now, it's likely to cost you a packet. I mean, weddings do these days, not to mention funerals. Mike? Now, I thought it only fair to offer to pay my corner. I mean, I'll pay for the lot if you like. I mean, after all, it is my, my wedding, isn't it? Now, I know it's considered the responsibility of the bride's father, you know, the family, to pick up the tab, but, uh, well, I don't think that applies as much as it used to. So, well, what I'm trying to say is I'll pay for the lot if you like. I wouldn't touch your money with a barge pole. Look, I'm trying to do you a favour. I mean, why fork out for a wedding you don't even want? One that you can't even afford. Who said they can't afford it? Well, I, I, I was under the impression that... Look, just tell him I'm trying to help. Trying to help? He's reverting to type. You think you can buy anything and anybody with your money. I'll pay for my daughter's wedding. Every penny of it. Well, that wasn't very bright, Mike, was it? He's stalling, using the fact that he's broke to postpone the wedding. Well, he is broke, and you reminding him of it isn't going to help. He has got his pride, you know. Think I was wrong to offer to pay? You've insulted him. You've just made things worse, don't you see? I want to marry you as soon as possible, and I'll insult anyone that tries to stop me, like he still is. Just gets worse, doesn't it? Before it gets better. I'm beginning to think it never will. <laughs> Don't you remember all them church? You know, I can't remember anything five minutes after I've been told. <laughs> me neither. What's all this hilarity then? Aye, aye, keeping him dark, weren't you? The pair of you. Good evening. Good evening. You know what a man eater you are, Bet. Thank you, Audrey. Where's your husband? He's on council business. Get off home and make his tea. <laughs> I'm just going to have one last drink. I shouldn't really, though. Do you know, I'm feeling a bit squiffy even after half an hour. <laughs> I shall pay for this one, Alan. No, thanks. Jenny's expecting me back. Oh, isn't that nice? Good looking and such a wonderful father. You're too good to be true. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Alan, uh, you couldn't do me a favour, could you? Yes, of course. Well. Wait for it, Bessie. <laughs> Could you just check if there's anything wrong with Gloria? She's not come in and it's not like her. It'd be a pleasure, yeah. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. 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 Oh, Alan, if you're passing, drop in. I didn't know you were that generous, Bet. I mean, asking him to call on Gloria, you might never see either of them again. You know, Audrey, that's very possible. Isn't it, Betty? So you reckon. <laughs> oh. Alan Bradley. Hello. 
Uh, message from Bet at the Rovers. Are you all right? Apparently they expected you in for work. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you now. What shall I... 